again, distal fractures are challenging. Proximal is a whole nother animal, but this is kind of one that I think uh, we can talk about really quickly. So the 22 year old male comes uh, in following a motorcycle collision has this closed injury. So uh, I mean, really quick, one of you, uh, this is a lot for, I know a few minutes, but maybe just uh, give me a general idea of what your considerations are for restoring length alignment rotation to this uh, femur. Yeah. So obviously this is going to be a challenge, right? This is a segmental fracture. Um, and so one of the things I'm going to do is, you know, just like I did in my other cases, I'm going to look at the other leg first, right? I'm going to get all the uh, 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 things that I need in terms of length alignment rotation uh, from the other limb. Um, and I'm going to make sure I have that in the operating room to know what to compare it to. Um, and so um, first of all, I also want to make sure with any femur fractures, make sure there's no femoral neck, but we're not, we're not going to talk about that. But in, in the event that's, that's not the case, um, and I'm just looking at this, I'm looking really at the other limb and I'm just making sure before I do any prep and drape, I have everything I need to know about his other limb, especially his rotation. I'll actually move the hip around and look at his external rotation, look at his internal rotation as well prior to prep and drape so that when I'm done fixing the right side, I'll also move them to make sure that it's symmetrical uh, comparative to the other side. So I do all that no matter what type of femur I'm doing to make sure that it's gonna be the same. Uh, James, any, uh, any considerations or, or pearls for kind of this broken napkin ring uh, type of fracture? Well, it's kind of like a, a traumatic clamshell osteotomy. So the, the benefit of that is you're going to be able to line the distal fracture and the proximal fractures up on your implant. The negative is that you're not going to be able to rely on that central piece to really behave. And if it does have a split, um, you're definitely at risk of displacing that a little bit. And that's not necessarily a problem, um, but it can make using that as your presumptive reduction tool a little bit more challenging. Yeah, absolutely. So um, this is kind of my approach. And so utilizing actually a handful of techniques, we used a bovie cord uh, to measure length. And I think you just have to pick a consistent point. So either pick the top of the most cranial aspect of the femoral head or the tip of the greater trochanter and then down to a, a defined point on the distal aspect of the femur. Alignment, uh, use it, I actually use two different techniques in terms of rotation. I like the perfect lateral of the knee uh, as, a, as a start point. And then, so I, I get a perfect lateral of the knee with a C arm and then go to a perfect lateral of the hip and then note the change, the delta rotation of the Im image intensifier. And that gives me my aniversion of the proximal femur. The other way to do this, and we did both of them here, is getting a perfect AP of the knee with the set, uh, patella centered over the distal femur and then just come north to the AP of the hip for the lesser troke profile. So these are things that are done before we even uh, preparation and draping. You know, really, um, I'm a piriformis nail uh, aholic, and so I like using straight nails for straight bones, even in a more distal metadiaphyseal fracture. I just, it, it's, I'm pretty simple-minded, so uh, I don't think it really matters as much here, but uh, the path of the nail is, and so making sure that as the nail comes into that distal segment, we talked about retrograde nailing, uh, but making sure that the nail stays uh, centered along the metadiaphyseal uh, segment distally. And then for the sagittal plane, you know, in general, the as long as the guide wire is centered in the distal femur, uh, you should not uh, end up with too much of an apex anterior, apex posterior deformity. I think that can happen, but um, you know, you can just you can check and just it's really about guide wire uh, placement. And so these are our final uh, images. And so on the AP, uh, we made sure that the lesser profile uh, matched on the um, distal segment, making sure that the nail kind of is, is central and then on the lateral uh, checking our alignment. And so, you know, I kind of talked about the, the cues that we use for the lesser trochanter and the distal femur uh, in the AP of the distal segment. Again, you see where that nail heads towards just medial to the intercondylar uh, uh, area on the distal femur towards the medial eminence. You know, where you can run into problems with these distal metadiaphyseal fractures is the nail is well contained within the subtrochanteric region and the diaphysis, but there's a lot of area to swim in distally. So you can end up with pretty marked varus or valgus deformities of the, of the distal femur uh, when you're dealing with a femoral shaft fracture. And then making sure the plumb line off the, the posterior aspect uh, and plumb line is the incorrect term, but making sure the line 
uh, off the linea aspera and the posterior uh, femur is well lined up. I don't, this was not an open. Um, this is a bunch of percutaneous uh, incisions for uh, a shoulder hook, which is my implant of, of choice in terms of passing nails and manipulating uh, fracture fragments. And that patient went on to heal uh, pretty uneventfully. So in summary, there's multiple opportunities for malalignment in the femur. Again, if you should care about it, if anything, because it's uh, potentially a result of um, medical legal action as well as patient dysfunction and can affect uh, bony healing. You have to understand some of the average anatomic values uh, to give yourself a starting point for understanding what may be abnormal. Again, if the patient has a contralateral uninjured side, that's your template. And so whether you save images on an image intensifier um, or try to match them, um, utilize what you have at, and what the patient gives you. And then we talked a little bit about some of the intraoperative techniques, obviously best uh, demonstrated or you should see them or read about them. There's multiple nice technique papers out there um, with each of them on there, but you can use the implants, whether it's a nail and or a plate. Um, we saw some distal femur fractures. You can use the plate to help actually achieve near anatomic alignment and then use all the radiographic and clinical cues uh, that are provided to you to, uh, to really uh, hone in um, femoral length alignment and rotation. So with that, I'll stop. I think I may be a minute or so over, uh, but I really appreciate it. And thank you to my, uh, my panelists for their presentation.